So I figured this might be a good time to post this particular video. Uh, in case you're not aware, I live in the U.S. and the state of our country right now is just horrifying. There's so many things happening um, that is making it hard for me to keep my perspective and my optimism. There's just too many horrifying things in the news. So without listing them, because I don't have that kind of time, unfortunately, I wanted to post this video about my five favorite English books. And at the same time, I'm going to kind of talk to you about what's cheering me up in a bookish way and a few things in a not so bookish way. Hey, Booktube, it's Kim at Middle of the Book March. I have what I think is a um, a weaponized or a pirated tag that was started by Shelley Swearingen. And she she kind of um, formed it into a tag based on a video from Eric Carl Anderson and Sarah from Hardcover Hearts, who did a video on their five favorite English novels. And Shelley developed a tag out of it. I think she tagged me, I'm pretty sure. So I'm going to post everybody's videos down below. And what I'm going to tell you is, um, I'm going to give you my my five favorite English novels that I've read since joining BookTube. So I've been on BookTube about two and a half years. And I'm going to show you my five favorite, all of them are five stars, and talk to you a little bit about them. And then when I'm done with that part, I'm going to show you and tell you about some things that are cheering me up because I think we all need some of that right now. So um, I'm going to look over here for a little bit because I do have notes. So let me show you the first one that came to mind when I thought of pulling some of my favorite English books. This one is The Cost of Living by Deborah Levy. And this is the second in her working autobiography series um, of three books. Now, Deborah Levy was born in August of 1959. She is a British author, a poet, playwright, and she had plays that were staged at the Royal Shakespeare Company. The Cost of Living is a, um, like I said, it's a working autobiography is the subtitle, and it's kind of her, her telling the reader her experiences after getting divorced with two daughters trying to find her place in London and working as a writer, what all of that meant to her, how she found her next place to exist and to work and what it meant to her finances, her emotional health, her mental health, the relationship with her daughters. I was um, so surprised by this book because it she speaks a lot to motherhood and how um, all of those experiences in her family and the upheaval, um, how that affected her relationship with her daughters, like I said, and her thoughts on motherhood. She said some things in this book that I I was surprised that somebody would say out loud, that a mother would say out loud, but I, I found myself nodding the entire time I was reading it. So I love this book. Um, it was, I probably never would have discovered Deborah Levy without BookTube. The next one is Girl, Woman, Other by Bernadine Evaristo. And this won the Booker Prize in 2019. I will not talk about the other one. Um, Bernadine Evaristo was born in 1959. She is a British author, playwright, poet, um, academic. She has been lauded and credentialed in so many different ways for her contributions to the arts and literature in the UK. And I absolutely loved this book. And I might, I may say this a few times. And you know what? For the most part, um, there's only two books I'm going to show you that I would have discovered or I already had known about on my own. I may not have ever discovered this book without uh, BookTube. And I love her writing style. It's very artistic and different. Um, I love the content of this book. It, it kind of reads like interwoven, interlinked short stories about primarily black women in the UK. Um, there are some other characters who are not black. There are, are, are some other gendered characters and it ties together so well. She just did an amazing 
feat of, of literary uh, engineering to tie everything together, and I just loved it. Let's see, what's the next one? Oh, this is such a good one. Quartet in Autumn by Barbara Pym. Uh, Sean the Book Maniac had this on his channel. He is a giant fan of Barbara Pym. And again, I would never have found her without him and without BookTube. Um, Barbara Pym lived from June 1913 to January 1980. She was an English novelist. In the 50s, she published a series of social comedies. And Pym wrote a lot about a certain demographic of women and different, um, a lot of unmarried women, a lot of middle-aged, older women in small uh, English villages with vicars and curates and a church community. This particular book is about four co-workers, two men, two women, who are all getting into middle age, retirement age, and their daily grind at their jobs. And um, we get glimpses into their outside lives, outside of their work, and are they friends? Do they like each other? Do they associate with, with each other outside of the office? What are their lives like? And what does it mean to work in a job where you do the same thing every day? You come in, you do your job, you go home, and it you go on repeat every day. What does that mean for your emotional and mental health? And and how does how do these four people fight that, accept it, use it? What do they do about it? And I just... I just love this book. Um, let's see. I talked about this book recently. This is Cranford by Elizabeth Gaskell. And, and Gaskell was lived from September 1810 to November 1865. And she's also referred to as Mrs. Gaskell. A really interesting uh, name for Victorian women quite often. Um, she wrote a lot of... Um, she wrote novels about Victorian society and the Victorian age. Uh, her first novel was Mary Barton, published in 1848. She also did a, um, I think the first biography of Charlotte, the life of Charlotte Bronte. And she was very careful what to, what to put, what material to put in that biography. So there, she didn't insert a lot of salacious details. But Cranford, I read, and I, I just love this book. It's a short book about a very small English village of Cranford, populated primarily by spinsters, widows, older women, and uh, the, the daily goings-on, the men that come in and out of their stories. What surprised me most was how funny this book is. And I loved, I loved, loved, loved it, um, and I can't wait. This is so far the only Elizabeth Gaskell book that I have read. And... This video would not be complete without my um, beloved Middlemarch. Uh, I I knew before I joined BookTube, I knew of Middlemarch, um, but I hadn't read it yet. And the only George Eliot novel I had read up until that was Silas Marner back in high school. Um, George Eliot lived from 1819 to 1880, and she's my favorite English Victorian novelist. Uh, clearly, I've read all of her novels and her short, a couple short stories, and I have volumes of her poetry in my other room. Um, she lived with George Lewes for 24 years without being married, which was absolutely unheard of in Victorian England, but she was far ahead of her time. I'm not going to tell you what Middlemarch is about because I've just gone over it and gushed about it profusely over the few years I've been on book two, but this is, this is, uh, one of the, I, I might say one of the only because with every George Eliot novel, I feel awash with admiration and love for her and, the, and her books and her writing style. So this has got to be, um, maybe one of two of my favorite reading experiences from booktube so far. I have an honorable mention, and again, I've already gushed about this. I'm going to gush about the Heartstopper series by Alice Oseman. Alice Oseman is 27 years old. She'll be 28 in October, I think. What a contribution she has given to the graphic novel, and this is such an amazing series. 
I've already gushed about it in my last Bookish Week, and I will link that video down below. But she's my honorable mention for one of my latest favorite English authors and English books. So those are my five favorites of English literature. I'm going to share with you the bookish things that are cheering me up. Now, I first talked to you about Deborah Levy. Now, something about Deborah Levy that's cheering me up, and there's a theme to this, and you'll get it pretty quickly. These are the other Deborah Levy books I have, and these cheer me up just looking at them on my shelves. I've read Black Vodka, um, a series of short stories, and I have read her novel, Hot Milk, which I both of which I really enjoyed. And The Cost of Living is her second working autobiography. Uh, her living autobiography, I have this one, number one, Things I Don't Want to Know, and also Real Estate, which is her third installment of her living autobiography. And I just have... I have a compilation of early novels and The Man Who Saw Everything. So having those books on my shelves truly cheers me up. Barbara Pym. I have three other novels of hers on my shelves. And I read Excellent Women, which I loved. Again, it's got this interesting floral reprint format, and I think it's really cute. But this was another wonderful Barbara Pym novel. And then in a different format, I have Some Tame Gazelle and Jane and Prudence. And I love the drawings on these covers. And these cheer me up, knowing that they're on my shelf ready for me to read. Um, let's see, I have one other Bernadine, Bernadine Evaristo novel, Blonde Roots, on my shelf. And I also have Mr. Loverman on audio on my chirp, in my chirp library. So I can pull this off my shelf and read it, or I can listen to Mr. Loverman in the car on audio. Um, Middlemarch, everything about Middlemarch cheers me up, and I had a video of all of my Middlemarch collection, but this little baby cheers me up a lot, just looking at it, because it's so pretty, it's, it's so pretty with the gold and the ribbon bookmark, and, you know, the end papers, I've showed you this numerous times, and the hardcover, um, it's, I love these, this collection, here's more over here, I love these little books, they're just so pretty, unabridged, fantastic artwork and it's lovely it's just lovely and then the last one is Cranford by Elizabeth Gaskell this is my kind of antiquarian copy of Cranford and I love that stamp on the front I found this at a local used bookshop that I've traded in many books and that I frequent very often which is housed in an old barn um, so this one has illustrations in it so I love reading old books. The, I love reading the physical books in this old antique format. So I also have North and South by Elizabeth Gaskell, which I am very happy about because a lot of people have said that's, that's their favorite. And I also have Wives and Daughters by Elizabeth Gaskell in this um, Barnes & Noble paperback format, which for the most part, the Barnes & Noble paperbacks have great font size, as do the Barnes & Noble old hardcovers. So those are the bookish things that are cheering me up. What are a few other things that are cheering me up? Um, I recently went out to um, grab a drink with a friend of mine and to a local restaurant that I really love, and I ordered this lemon. It's It was served in a martini glass, and it was not... It may have been lemoncello, one of the ingredients, but I'm going to try to find a picture and I will put the name of the drink here, but it was fantastic. I'm not a huge drinker anymore. I have my favorites, margaritas being one of them, but I do love a good flavored martini and that's what this one tasted like. So hopefully I get a good picture that it looks refreshing and I'll put the name of it in the screen. Um, my 14-year-old daughter and I love to binge watch comedies. She actually loves some of the 80s comedies. But one of the more recent shows that we're binge watching, again, is Schitt's Creek. And this is one of my favorite sitcom series of all time. I absolutely love David Rose, um, Daniel Levy, and I love the relationship with him and Patrick. It is so hilarious and warm and tear-inducing 
And I just love it. And I love listening to my daughter just cackle and laugh out loud. <laughs> what else is making, what else is cheering me up? Uh, my, um, my soon to come book project with Britta Bowler. Stay tuned. I'm not going to reveal what that is yet. Um, but being able to talk to Britta and set up a project that we're going to do together is, has been really fun for me. I also have a buddy read coming up in June, the very, the very first week in June with AJ Dunn. We are going to read, uh, Blood Meridian by Cormac McCarthy, which is a book I've been avoiding for a while, but, Michael K. Vaughn is doing June on the Range, and this is a primary Western modern classic novel. So AJ and I both wanted to read it, and we're going to do it together the first week in June. Uh, what else is cheering me up? There's so much on BookTube that always cheers me up. Um, Heidi's blogs, uh, Heidi from My Reading Life, her nature blogs are, are just act just fantastic and I tell her all I make a comment all the time how gorgeous her scenery is and how she missed her calling as a nature cinematographer I just love them those cheer me up to no end looking at Doris's pictures on Instagram Doris of Aldi books if you're not following her on Instagram she is such a wonderful photographer nature photographer um what else and I think the other thing that's cheering me up in some pretty dark times in my country is just my people, my family, uh, my daughters, my husband, the things that we get to do when we spend time together. Um, tonight, I'm filming this on Wednesday, and it's spaghetti night in my house every Wednesday. Uh, usually it's spaghetti, but it could be any form of pasta. That always cheers me up. And, oh, but I have to figure something else out because my 14-year-old decided she wants to be a vegetarian. I talked her out of being a vegan only because it would be extremely restrictive. And at her age, I I want to wait till she gets a little bit older and kind of slowly integrate her into that if she decides she really wants to eat a vegan diet. But so now I'm trying to figure out the best way at the last minute to provide a vegetarian spaghetti alternative um, while still being fairly nutritious. So what I think I can do is go and grab a bunch of fresh vegetables and and do kind of a marinara cacciatore kind of a combination. So we'll see. If I, if I make that and it turns out, well, maybe I'll take a picture of it and I'll put it in this video. If there's no picture, then it came out crappy. <laughs> so that's it for me. I'm, I'm hoping you enjoyed my combination of my five favorite English novels since joining BookTube and some of the things that are cheering me up. Let me know in the comments below if you've got favorite English novels or what you think about mine, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye, everybody.